Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of cards using honeybee stamps, mugs and kisses, honey cats dies. Super cute set. I had to pull it out. It's adorable. Had to make Christmas cards with it. So I started off by die cutting pretty much everything off camera because you guys just don't need to see me go through that process. And then as is tradition, <laughs> I did multiples of everything. So I die cut the mugs from some of my tonic cardstock. This is candy red and tonic's cardstock has a bit of texture to it, which I don't use texture car textured cardstock very often. However, it gives, especially when you're working with just like mainly die cuts, it gives a little extra something. And another thing that gives a little extra something is some ink blending. That really helps like liven up and give a bit more dimension and depth to die cuts, especially with ones like this where you're building an image or building a scene, etc. So with these ones, I was using uh, aged mahogany distress ink and just a blending brush and just blending that color onto all these little die cut mugs. And you can just see on camera how much depth I was able to get with that. So I went around and blended all of my mugs with that. And then I'm going to start assembling. I have all the little pieces. Um, I did like brown cardstock for the hot chocolate. I was, you know, I was just in a very, like I said, Christmassy mood. And I was thinking like, ooh, hot chocolate. So you could leave off these little ovals because technically like the whipped cream portion can cover it. But I purposely staggered it a little bit so you could still see it just because I want, you know, I was like, you just, you got to see that it's hot chocolate. <laughs> So adhered all of these little elements together. And then there's little candy cane pieces in this die set as well that I really love because they're just two pieces. So it's really simple to assemble them. So I die cut the little like stripey piece from a deep red cardstock and then the white part from white cardstock. And then you just adhere them together. Simple. And then the little snowflakes in the set, I die cut from some white glitter paper to decorate my little mugs, just keeping it simple, but adding those little extras because again when it's die cuts it's fun to kind of experiment with you know ink blending different textures different finishes i've also got some foil cardstock that i'm going to use as well so i got everything um, assembled and then i decided to add a little something something to the whipped cream on the top of these so i just took a copic marker and i was thinking cinnamon i don't know why because you don't really often do cinnamon with hot chocolate but in my world you do so <laughs> I used to but you could just use a brown marker as well and do it more like a dusting of cocoa but I'm just lightly dabbing this marker along the tops and the swirls of this die cut whipped cream to give it that illusion if you had something like a dull like non not super reflective um glitter you could use glitter as well like even just like say a distress rock candy glitter would look really pretty because then it would look almost like a little bit of sugar again in real life complete overkill but you know for cards and christmas things you can never have enough <laughs> but a brown glitter would look really pretty you could just add a bit of adhesive sprinkle a bit of that on the sky's the limit there's so many things you could do so anyway anyway i just did little dots with the copic marker went along dotted all that onto the tops of these and then to apply or adhere these little candy canes, I took a craft knife and just cut along the, the wafer die for the wafer dies for the mugs, um, emboss a little like line. So you know where to line up the, the coffee, the different die cuts, etc. Um, I just followed that with a craft knife and cut it so I could insert the candy cane. If you don't want to mess around with a craft knife, you could just cut the candy cane, like cut it a little shorter. So it looks like it's tucked in, but not actually do that. But I felt like being extra and it was simple to just cut along, tuck in the candy cane, glue it into place. So I've got everything assembled. I have a rough idea of my layout there. That's what I moved off to the side. That's another, you know, perk when I'm making multiples is sometimes when I'm just got too many things going on, I'll just kind of sit and play with all the pieces till I figure out the layout that I want. So I also pulled out the hug in a mug stamp set. This kind of coordinates with the mugs and kisses wafer dies. There's a bunch of, you know, punny sentiments and all the things I love. So I pulled out a couple sentiments. Actually, no, this is from the Biddy Buzzwords Holidays. I'll get to the hug in a mug. I use that on the inside. This is from the Biddy Buzzwords Holidays. So I, because I wanted to make this like Christmas themed 
cards. I stamped sentiments, just companion sentiments, onto some ivory cardstock with some ground espresso distress oxide ink. Set those aside. On the inside of the card, I used the hug in a mug stamp set just to tie it all together with a little bit of a coffee theme. So my card bases are ivory cardstock as well, and these are top folding A2 size cards. So I stamped the first portion of the sentiment with that same aged mahogany distress ink. So I stamped that, and then I'm going to stamp the companion sentiment to like finish it off with that same ground espresso distress oxide ink. And then there's also little elements in that set where you could stamp different um, like latte art basically for these mugs. Super cute. Love it. But I was I had my heart set on using the whipped cream, so I didn't get to use those today. <laughs> So once I've got the insides of my cards stamped, I thought I might as well do it all at once while I have my Misty out before I, you know, put it away and give myself a little more desk space here. So got the insides of these cards stamped and then off camera, I trimmed down those first two little sentiment strips just with my paper trimmer. And then I actually used some of my pattern paper. Even though I'm on the Honeybee design team, I hoard their pattern paper. I just, I love it. <laughs> it's really hard for me to use it. But I did. I used one of the patterns from the Vintage Holiday Pack. That's the brown pattern. And I also used one of the patterns from the Gingham Galore Holiday Pack. And a piece of vellum. Just mixing it up a little bit. So I layered those together. And then I'm adhering all of my little die cut pieces. So I've got my mugs and a heart. The spoons I die cut from some matte gold cardstock. Because that just, to me, is like so fancy. I love it. I love it. Anyway, adhered all my little elements. And again, off camera, I had die cut the word holiday from the Biddy Buzzwords holidays set. And I had die cut that from some brown cardstock and stacked that th with three layers to give it some dimension. And then the little dots for the eye, I have separate because it, I don't know why it took me so many years to figure this out, but rather than stack those itty bitty teeny little die cuts, Separately, it's so much easier to stack them on the finish card. You just dot them, pick them up with a little jewel picker, stick them into place, they're done. Or if you don't even want to do that and keep it even extra simple, use like a little brown crystal or whatever color of like word you've done. You could put a little jewel or embellishment or leave it off completely depending. Sometimes you can get away with it and it's fine. Anywho, everything's adhered. I'm gonna add splatter because it's Christmas. <laughs> So this is another video, so you can never have too much. One, you can never have too much splatter, but at Christmas time, it just gives it a little extra something. And I love it. And with these, it was just kind of too perfect because it's like the wintry theme, everything. So I used um, some white spray splatter that I just poured out onto my mat and my fan brush. Put these into my splat box so I don't get splatter on absolutely everything. And then splatter these in the background. One thing to note, depending on what you're using for splatter, whether it's like craft paint, etc., things like the, the metallic cardstock and vellum, either it'll take way, way longer to dry. Like on vellum, it takes way longer to dry. So just FYI, or it might not dry at all. So just be wary of that. On regular cardstock, everything, splatter's just going to dry. It'll be fine. But yeah, I don't even want to admit how many times I had to smear and like fix things because I kept getting my fingers all over it because I keep forgetting the, yeah, metallic cardstocks because they have that coating on them and vellum because it's vellum. Things just don't want to dry as quickly. So let those dry. On the insides of my cards, I used some of the leftover pieces of the same pattern papers I used on the outside because I had the scraps sitting here. So I adhered those just to finish it all off. And that is my completed cards. So like always, I will include links below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. And then I'll have pictures at the end of the video, pictures in the blog post. So it's a little easier to, you know, check things out and navigate. Thank you all so much for watching, for subscribing, thumbs up and commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I'll see you all very soon in another video. Bye.